Transgenic farming is the only practical way to sustainably feed the predicted 9 billion people who will be sharing our planet with us by 2020. The United States Department of Agriculture agrees that farming with transgenic crops has saved farmers time and lowered the use of toxic herbicides and pesticides that threaten our environments. Also, transgenic farming methods were already being used by almost half of our world's farmable acres last year, equating to about 169 million acres. And the USDA says that the numbers are still climbing. Our crops encourage farmers to work with the environment and use the natural methods that plants produce to their advantage while saving themselves time and money. Also, when farmers are doing well and not losing crops and money due to easily preventable causes, the people and the economy do better. One of the major problems that we are facing is that we won't have enough food to sustainably feed everybody. And transgenic crops are the key to solving this worldwide dilemma. Transgenic crops are used worldwide and they reduce the need for plowing delicate habitats and undisturbing land. We can take higher use of land that conventional farmers tend to leave behind and replenish it naturally rather than dumping loads of toxic commercial fertilizers that eventually end up in our lakes, rivers, and oceans, poisoning the environment <coughs> and poisoning ourselves. Transgenic farming also helps to lessen the impact that modern farming methods have on the environment. We have revolutionized the whole idea of farming with transgenic crops. Now, not only do we take from the environment like conventional farming methods tend to do, but we can give back to it without the excessive use of deadly chemicals, like organic methods claim to do. The people who protect and grow our food are just as important as the food itself. So when farmers do well, so do our stomachs, and more importantly, so does the economy. However, according to Science Magazine, in 2013, more than a million acres of U.S. GM farmland are infested with Roundup resistant weeds. As these weeds grow resistant, farmers use more and more herbicides in attempts to kill them. In fact, from 1996 to 2011, genetically engineered crops actually increased herbicide use by 527 million pounds. Well, according to the International Service for the Acquisition of Agrobiotech Applications, within the first 17 years that we have been using biotech crops, there has been a 503 mil million kilogram drop in the use of pesticides. This has also dropped the release of greenhouse gases by removing the equivalent of 11.9 million cars from our roads. Point of information. Despite what you might have said earlier, according to research conducted by CBS News, GM foods are not going to solve world, world hunger as biotech companies would like us to believe. World hunger is due to poor distribution of food and poverty, not the amount produced. Producing more transgenic products is not going to solve anything. Well, according to Time Magazine in 2014, approximately 650,000 to 700,000 children die each year with another 300,000 going blind due to vitamin A deficiencies. According to Golden Rice, Golden Rice and GM bananas have been engineered to save them and have passed tests showing that they are safe. Why would you deny someone the right of something that could potentially save their lives? First round, please. The numbers clearly show a drastic increase from 1996 to 2014 in the adoption of transgenic crops. This graph from the USDA shows just how dependent on GM crops we really are. Out of 100% of the farmable acres <coughs> for soybeans, that's the blue line, um, about 94% of the land is used for growing transgenic soybeans and other important plants aren't far behind. According to the USDA, research shows that in 2010, yields were not significantly different between genetically modified crops and conventional crops. In fact, they produce lower yields in some crops such as soybeans. How do you expect to feed the world if you have increasingly low yields? Well, organic crops produce one-third less yields than conventional crops, and according to a study by Cornell University in 2005, transgenic crops produce even higher yields than conventional. So it trumps both of them. <laughs> We have also increased food security due to plants that now have greater nutritional content and health benefits, 
promote sustainable methods for farming, and have made the physical act of growing our food safer as well. The farmers in developing countries and industrialized, industrialized countries alike receive a better livelihood when they have steady crop yields with less losses. Point of information, you state that transgenic foods are healthy, yet according to permaculture news, multiple studies link glyphosate, a weed killer consistently sprayed on GMO products, to be linked with autism, birth defects, Parkinson's, and also. How can you feed the world if you're slowly poisoning people in the process? Well, actually, in February of this year, the FDA stated that all foods, traditional and transgenic alike, must meet the same health and safety requirements. So claiming that transgenic foods will make you sick pertains not only to us, if that were true, but that you, but that you too as well will be, but to you as well, our food is processed the same way in the body as your food. In 2014, according to the Institute for Responsible Technology, soy allergies jumped 50% in the UK just after GM soy was introduced. How can you say that transgenic crops are safer when people are having possibly deadly reactions to them? <coughs> according to the 2013 Genetic Literacy Project, every major scientific body and regulation agency in the world has reviewed this re Reviewed the research for GMOs and openly declared crop biotechnology and the foods currently available safe for sale. Transgenic crops help to ease the burden of these issues. They have been enhanced so that they can withstand droughts, flooding, harmful pests, flourish in salinized or dried out soil, and even replenish the soil for crops around and for years to come. And just last year alone, so. Um, the ISSA a widely used, has claimed that the widely used herbicide tolerant plants are both genetically modified but also have been traditionally bred to have bacterial genes that naturally block potentially harmful enzymes within themselves, similar to the way a human's immune system works. So now, not only can transgenic crops withstand more than the average organic or conventionally farmed plant, but they have more to offer as well. And in the long run, they prove to be the only logical way to feed and sustain the predicted 9 billion people that so desperately need our help. GMOs, people have gained a false, pessimistic view of transgenic crops, viewing them as a sort of environmentally destructive method of agriculture. This is not true. Transgenic crops can work with organic farming methods to, to maximize yields and, and sustainability while benefiting from the, from the positive points that are brought specifically by transgenic crops. An example of this, shown on my graph, is herbicide tolerant plants. As you can see, the insecticide use declines, declines directly correlating to the increase of use of Bt corn. A transgenic crop engineered to have transgenic crop engineered to use less pesticides and be herbicide tolerant. Point of information. According to the Huffington Post, in 2012, huge swaths of our country are infested with superbugs, pests resistant to the glyphosate in and Bt in GM crops. Because of this, pesticide use has increased by 116% from 2004 to 2007. Um, maybe short term that's true, but in fact, according to the service, the International Service for the Acquisition of Agrobiotech Applications, within the first 17 years of Bt crops and pesticide resistant crops from 1996 to 2012. Have the, there has been a 503 million kilogram drop in the use of pesticides. I'm trying to get 
this equates to taking 11.9 million cars off the road in terms of speed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You claim to have a huge impact on Kessner, but have you students have been yet to study not only a 6% decrease. You call that huge? Huge would be 11.9 million cars off the road, and that's way more than anything you can offer. <laughs> According to the end, uh, I'm going to show you the aggregation of the aggregate aggregations. That's exactly what we've done. Point of information. Um, you mentioned earlier you're increasing yields. However, a study reported by the USDA in February of 2014 concluded that GMO seeds have not been found to show increased yields. And in fact, yields of herbicide tolerant and insect resistant seeds had in some cases lower yields than conventional varieties. So how can you claim GM crops will feed the world when yields are equal to and lower than that of conventional methods? Um, sorry. That is false. According to the PG economics in 2013, between 1996 and 2012, crop farming technology was responsible for the addition of 122 million tons of soybeans and 231 million tons of corn. The technology has also contributed an extra 18.2 million tons of cotton and 6.6 .6 million tons of corn. Point of information. In studies concluded by San Francisco State University, levels of a soy allergen called trypsin inhibitor were 27% higher than raw GM soy, one of the largest GMO products produced in the world. In addition, soybeans, which should have a less, less of an allergen content when cooked, were just as persistent, and the trypsin levels were seven times higher than non-GMO soy. This suggests that the allergen in GMO soy is more likely to cause anaphylactic shock and possibly death. <laughs> the FDA regulation for <laughs> testing GM foods is strict and continuous for an indefinite period of time. The amount of testing continues on as long as the FDA decides it should, until it has no further questions as to the safety of a GM crop. Bringing all those allergens up is pointless considering it's past FDA, if it has passed FDA testing because it has been deemed safe by our government. Information. According to the Monsanto website, the Food and Drug Web Administration is responsible for the safety and appropriate labeling of food and feed products grown from, the, grown from GM crops. Yet the FDA policy claims that, quote, ultimately it is the responsibility of the producer of a new food to evaluate the safety of the food and assure that the safety requirement of Section 402A1 of the Act is met. So who really is regulating your food here? Because it's not the FDA and clearly it's not your biotech company. Well, it may not be them. There are, there have been 1,700 plus studies, including researchers from UC Davis and the American Medical Association, that have all been concluded that GMOs do not, and I quote, are no riskier than their conventional farm chemicals. Point of information. Despite being only approved for animal use, scarlet corn, a GM crop with the potential to be a deadly allergen, was found in, a Taco, Bell in Taco Bell shells, as told by the Friends of the Earth Experiment in 2000. Your harmful products are making their way, illegally, I might add, into our food supply. Are you doing anything to improve the regulations of your crops? The FDA's testing of individual crops and modifications can go on for years before it's approved or even field tested. Plenty of time to uncover any faults of the crop. It doesn't stop testing and GMOs until it's confirmed to be safe and no further questions on safety exist in the scientists. They also have a set amount of time before those crops need to be evaluated again. So these crops are constantly being tested for their safety. Now, a lot of people have brought up the question of whether or not GMOs haven't been proven to be effective in the real world yet. Yet there have been plenty of examples of this. For example, an entire papaya population in Hawaii was saved from being destroyed by the big spot virus, a deadly disease that makes papayas 
inconceivable for humans. Transgenic ingenuity and in science saved millions of dollars and hundreds of jobs in the papaya, papaya industry in Bolivia. And that is just one example. A, current, a GMO currently being developed by top scientists and being researched by the, the Massachusetts Institution of Technology has shown that a corn crop has been able to recoup 15% of all drought of all the crops lost to drought in an entire year so far. Education Service report in 2013, 870 million people were suffering from undernutrition and malnutrition globally. The World Hunger Education Service report also stated that poverty and poor environmental conditions are the main causes for world hunger. Transgenic crops have been specifically designed to have greater amounts of micronutrients than organic and conventional crops. Mm -hmm. uh, the point that I think is right now is how transgenic farming beneficial to third world countries. However, in the Harvest of Fear film from 2001, we saw the papaya that was genetically engineered to thrive through disease. However, even with the promises of increased yields, resistance to disease, and food effects, your patenting system makes it nearly impossible for people in third world countries to actually acquire the seeds for use. Well, actually, with every dollar invested for farmers in developing countries, they make $3.74 in profit. I think that this is an incredible profit made off of transgenic seeds. In 2000, the Council for Agricultural Science and Technology report stated that biotech soy, soy corn, and cotton have decreased soil erosion by 90%, preserving 37 million tons of topsoil. It also stated that biotech, cro biotech crops must provide, I mean, provide a 70% reduction in herbicide runoff and an 85% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. Just because people are hungry doesn't mean they're giving up the right to know what's in their food. According to Sustainable Enterprise Media, in 2013, transgenic corporations paid $80 million to stop labeling laws from being passed. Your biotech scientists claim that there's nothing wrong with transgenic foods, yet your companies try to hide it. Why are you worrying about labeling the food as genetically modified if there's nothing to be afraid of? Well, according to a researcher at UC Berkeley, Labeling GMOs is actually bad for the people and the, and the environment because it creates stigma and lowers demand and investments when we are in dire need of the benefits that they can bring us. Point of information. <clears throat> Pro-labeling campaigns in California, Washington, and Oregon have spent $9.8 million, according to the Forbes magazine in 2013. This shows the intense consumer interest in knowing what is in their food. Why is your in industry so against this? Do you reply because it will scare people? Well, according to the USDA report this year, 95% of the food needs to be organic to be labeled organic. There is the possibility that the remaining 5% could contain some kind of genetically modified product, meaning that the organic label would have to be removed and would therefore cause much chaos as all products would have to be tested and reviewed in order to make sure that all genetically modified content in every product on the shelf is labeled. If we are not labeling organic products properly, why do we have to label genetically modified products properly and waste money on that? Transgenic crops have benefited the world in many ways. In South Africa, they have contributed <coughs> to the recent substantial economic growth. According to the August 2014 issue of The New Yorker, BT Cotton being one of information of the country's total crop yield has generated $50 million each year alone. You say that transgenic products can feed the world, yet according to the Cornucopia Institute, GMOs cost up to $150 more per bag than conventional. 
How can we expect GMOs to, keep, to feed poor families in developing countries when some Americans can't even, can't even afford those seeds? Even though transgenic seeds are more expensive than conventional seeds, the 2013 International Food Policy Research Institute report stated that BT farmers were spending 15% more on transgenic seeds, but 50% less on pesticides. This reduction in pesticide use is not only environmentally friendly, but economically viable as well. According to the Community Supported Agriculture in 2000, consumer advocates are worried that patenting, patenting these new plant varieties will raise the price of seeds so high that small farmers in, th in third, world, third world countries will not be able to afford seeds for GM crops, thus widening the gap between the wealthy and the poor. Like I said before, farmers in developing countries receive $3.74 for each dollar invested in genetically modified crops. This will not widen the gap. This will actually increase the gap. Transgenic crops are designed to feed the world. A single bowl of golden rice provides children with 60% of their daily requirements for vitamin A. This is an incredible advancement that could save many lives. Each year, 190 million children will suffer from vitamin A deficiency and as many as half of a million will go blind. Transgenic crops like this one can not only save lives, but also truly benefit countries around the world, especially underdeveloped ones. Transgenic agriculture is a very sustainable form of farming. Transgenic seeds are designed to need less pesticides and water, as well as nourish the people of our world properly. When farming with transgenic seeds, we are not harming the earth. We are only trying to return our resources to a place where they can be sustainably renewed. As I said before, this method of farming has only been developed to help the human race and to prevent us from harming our world even more. Like I said, vitamin, I mean, golden rice is one of the most important um, inventions made from the transgenic agriculture. It is estimated that in the Philippines, it could have saved almost 9,000 cases of blindness each year. Transgenic farming methods can easily be combined with organic farming methods um, to create a world with only sustainable agriculture. Without transgenic seeds, organic farming cannot occur everywhere in the world, and that is a simple fact. But with the help of transgenic seeds, we can feed the hungry population of the world in a safe and sustainable way. As a human race, we must collectively decide how we change our ways of harming the earth into helping it. Transgenic farming can be the way that we truly better the world sustainably. Okay, so organic affirmative is now going to move into the affirmative spot. And I'm going to have a bit of a switch. Um, something I wanted to mention. Uh, wanted to make it clear to you that this is uh, not a mock debate. They've never faced their opponents before. They've rehearsed and, and researched and practiced separate from each other. So this is the first time they're hearing each other, in case you were wondering. Um, I'm done.